I got into the periodic table when I was eight years old. And the, the way it happened, I remember the specific day that it happened. Uh, I went with my mother, who was a librarian at the public library where I grew up, and I found this book about the periodic table, which I didn't know about before. And I read this book, and this book said, you know, that there is this list, this very short list of substances that all fit on one page, that combining in different forms form all the millions of materials that we know, that form everything. And this just blew me away. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe that, the, that it was, you know, the structure of the universe was so simple in a sense. But not only that, the, the, the coup de grace of the whole thing was that later in the book it explained that not only is that there's this short list of substances that form everything, but there's a pattern to them. And so you can make a table of them, with, you know, and their properties repeat over and over again. And that just extra blew me away. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it, and I, th I felt, I had this feeling like I was glimpsing at something very fundamental about the universe. And so I decided on that day that I needed, number one, I needed to learn as much as I could about these elements and the way that they combined, uh, you know, and that, that set me on the career path that I'm, that I'm still on now. And second, I felt like I had to get a hold of a sample of all of these elements because I felt like if I could do that, then I would have the ingredients to the whole universe. Uh, and so I started that collection when I was eight years old, and I've been doing it ever since. Uh, for example, this carbon specimen right here uh, dates back to that time. This is just a, a piece of pencil lead. I had a pencil and you know broke off some of the pencil lead and crushed it up. Um, and that is where this carbon sample came from. I chipped some copper off of a penny. That's not actually this sample, but I chipped some copper off of a penny and, and saved that. That's one of the older samples. As a matter of fact, though, uh, the most recent uh, element sample that I obtained was about two hours ago. But because we were doing this today, I, I grabbed a, a couple of a couple of scrap pieces of uranium, and so that I've got, I'll bring that home, and that will go into the collection. Uh, you know, it, de it depends on exactly what you mean by rare, but probably in terms of the abundance in which they occur in the earth, how easy it is to find them in nature, probably some of the rarest ones that I have are these rare earth elements down here. Uh, gadolinium, terpium, dysprosium, holmium, erbium, all of these are, uh, you know, very, very, very low abundance. Uh, you know, we would never even know about them in, until we develop the modern chemical methods that we have to set to, to break chemicals down uh, because their properties are also similar and they, and they occur so rarely in the Earth's crust. So those are probably some of the rarest that I have. This mineral uh, is called quartz. If we were to give it, you know, the, its mineral species name, uh, this is quartz. But it's a particular variety of quartz uh, with this kind of darkish orange top here uh, called citrine. Uh, is, is a, it's a varietal name. So there's a number of different varieties of quartz depending on what the crystals look like and what color they are. Um, so this quartz is almost all uh, these elements right here, silicon and oxygen, it's SiO2. This is, this is uh, obsidian, uh, this shiny black rock here. It's actually not a mineral, um, it, but it is a rock. Um, and the reason it's not a mineral actually is that minerals by definition all have a periodic crystal structure. So what that means is that the, the atoms of the crystal are, are arranged in a particular order that repeats over and over again, just like bricks in a brick wall, essentially. Um, whereas the atoms in this obsidian sample uh, are jumbled up, they're disordered. Uh, they don't have any long range order to them. So the, the elements that compose this sample predominantly, it turns out, are once again, silicon and oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, the, this is the, the amorphous version, what's called amorphous, means that it doesn't have a particular form, so the atoms are not in a particular order. Um, but it is predominantly silicon and oxygen atoms. There's a sprinkling of some other types of atoms as well from, you know, from this part of the periodic table that, that give it the darker color, uh, but, but most of it is silicon and oxygen.